Hey guys, Sean here again. So here I'm going to give you guys another breakdown of 3D Cut Retopo. And I realized the last video I had didn't really go through all the different tools and things you can do, warnings and things to look out for. So I'm going to go over that one more time in here in uh, 3D Cut. So what I'm going to be covering is some of the tools, some of the, some of the things you got to look out for, and the benefits of why 3D Cut is actually a really great tool to use. And I've been using it for a while. I really love it for Retopo. Now there are other 3D programs that do have Retopo, that being ZMesher. Um, from ZBrush as well as Mudbox, but I gotta say, 3D Code is probably one of the better ones. You can unwrap it as you as you uh, build your model. It does pelt it a little bit, not necessarily my favorite thing, but it does handle a lot of polys. Handles a lot, millions and millions of polys. Handles it really well as long as you have a solid machine and you don't want to break your machine per se. It unwraps beautifully, which we'll go over later on. We'll talk about creature unwrapping. I have a, a character head which I do a demo on and I'll post in our group for those that are in my class. But for the most part, it is a pretty solid tool. So one of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna import our model, and, and the things you have to keep looking out for when you do export your model, is make sure your model's set to the zero, zero axis point. And that's, um, you wanna make sure that it's lined up if you know algebra, if you know geometry, you'll see on every grid you'll have the zero, zero axis point. You'll see that in 3 Studio Max and Maya. And you want to make sure your model's kind of in the center of that space. And he's, he's a flat, he's very, um, shall I say, flush with the line of his middle line on his body with the zero, zero axis point. All right, so let's go and do an import. So to import, we're going to go to import and we're going to go to reference mesh. There we go. I'm going to grab him. Now it does take OBJ and FBX. I'm going to use OBJ in this case. Open him up. And let's go and move out. Now, navigation wise, it works just like Maya, except when your cursor is over the model. When that happens, you do have to use Alt. Otherwise, you don't have to use Alt. You can do a left mouse for rotating, right mouse for zooming and middle mouse to dolly back and forth, absent of alt. But if again, if your cursor is over your model, you do need to use alt to let 3D Coat know that you are not um, trying to model it, but simply moving your camera. Now, when you model your, um, when you start to retop of your model, and again, remember I did file, import, and we wanna make sure we import um, reference mesh. Um, again, and I also made sure it was at the zero, zero, you want to make sure that you can see your model really nicely and to control those features are is right up here we can adjust the ambient light on our guy just by moving my cursor on the using my left mouse button um, we can do the same thing for the contrast primary light here kind of make it flat or not get rid of shadows and over here we have the angle of the light so I can move the light around if I need to move it around dramatically or whatever I'm gonna put it right back right to get a nice little flat lighting I prefer a flat lighting when working with your model, otherwise it's going to be really hard to see what's going on. So our model's in, we need to set our symmetry. So what that symmetry is allows me to actually choose what direction I want to build my model. So in our case with our guy, we're going to set our symmetry to X, and you can see our symmetry active right there. Pretty cool. And uh, Right now, 3D Code thinks we're going to try to paint on him. You'll see the brushes are active. This is not the correct menu we want. So we're going to switch topics. This is a little bit similar to XSI. You can just switch really quick and have an active button for it. So we're going to go to Retopo. As we go to Retopo, we can move our cursor over our model. And uh, I'm going to go in left mouse click over my model to change my radius. I should say right mouse click. Sorry about that. So I'm right mouse clicking over my model to change my radius of my brush. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want you to actually see, hit Alt when my cursor's over and I don't want to change my brush and middle mouse. You'll see my brush and a little red dot. See that little red dot? This guy is my symmetry right there. See the symmetry is active. They run into each other. Pretty cool. And with him over my model, I can again hit the right mouse button and lower my brush radius. You'll see my radius moving up here in the corner. And a radius works mainly for your movement, um, like for your brush, and this works kind of like a soft selection, and some of the other features. So let's go and take a look at this here. First we're going to look at is point to faces, and then we're going to work our way out to the other tools here. So let's go to point to faces here. And I'm going to go and build out a few shapes, and I'm keeping everything in mind as quads. Everything's going to be quads, 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 quads. And you really do, when you model your character, you do want to keep quads. The only time you would go to triangles if you're under uh, restraints for a game and you need to keep things efficient 
in games we do use triangles. I don't care what your other teachers tell you, that's just kind of how it is because uh, we have to meet our deadlines, we have to export stuff, and it has to be efficient to go into an export. And I work in both commercials and games. So quads for movies and so forth, commercials, games, you have the luxury of doing triangles every once in a while. All right, so we go in here, I'm gonna move my cursor over my quad object, and I'm gonna right mouse click, and this will build my geometry out. See that, pretty cool. Sweet, look at that, really efficient, really easy right there. Now if you need to move your points, you can also go to your move vertices tool. I can grab my points and move them back into place, pretty nice. And it snaps really efficiently and doesn't really go to the other side, it just kind of stops, which is pretty cool. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is our points to faces. So let's put a few more on here. So I'm going to go and uh, uh, build one there, build one there. And I am left mouse clicking, by the way, when I'm building these points. Really efficient, really nice, really cool. Keep going because I can. And you'll notice we got kind of a cutoff area here where um, 3D code gets a little confused. So you just have to change your camera real quick. Rotate it just a bit because what happens is it doesn't know how to calculate the silhouette. So we just need to give uh, 3D code a little bit of help. So I'm going to move my cursor over here, 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 build it out. Really awesome. There we go. Pretty nice, huh? So another tool we have is quads. Let's take a look at quads and what it can do. So I can click on the edge here, click on the uh, the uh, point from across away, and then go up to, finally to the ending point to make it a quad. Pretty nice. This is pretty much how this tool works. You just go up here, click, click and build, click, click and build. Pretty nice. Anytime you want to get out of this or maybe go to a different edge, you'll notice it doesn't really automatically do that unless it's nearby. Um, what you have to do is just hit escape. Once you escape, just go back into the tool again and we can build out. Pretty slick, pretty clean. You'll notice it just jumped. It only really does it if there's an, uh, uh, an angled edge, like an L. Otherwise, it's not going to uh, jump to the next one, which is kind of frustrating. But you can always hit escape and get out of there. Pretty sweet. Well, say we built out here, and we noticed that we had a gap. I'm going to hit escape to get out of this tool for a second. What you can do to fill that is a thing called caps. This guy will go over the offending area. Now, we're a little too far away for it to know what's going on. So we're going to try to move in the camera. And it should just grab the edges that you want. So what we can do, ah, you know what it is? We don't have a hole, that's why. Let me go ahead and get out of that tool for a second. We'll just go back to selection. Actually, let's go to quads. And we'll just make a hole. We're just going to make a stinky hole on here. Sorry, that sounded weird, not intentional. <laughs> and we're going to uh, make this right here. You didn't hear that, and we can escape. And uh, you never know, maybe it goes to the bathroom in his neck. So we go out of here, we got a hole right there. So I'm gonna go in here, and we're gonna get a caps. And your caps goes automatically to that hole. Notice it, it didn't recognize a hole before because it didn't have a enclosed area. And I can right click and it'll make the hole there. Now obviously it looks for the edges so right after you make the hole it's all where's the next one? And it goes to all the edges which is kind of annoying but that's okay. Easy to get out. Just switch to select and it goes away. So we again we went over uh, quads and we went points to faces. We looked at caps. There's also one strokes which is pretty cool. So I'm going to hit the alt key and move out my my camera here for a second and we'll switch to strokes here and strokes are pretty nice because now I can just draw on the neck and I'll draw on the neck again and we'll do it one more time because we can and hit alt to move my camera I don't want to get up close I'm going to alt middle mouse drag and well, let's go ahead and finish it up so we'll just go and draw down now what it does is 3D coat looks at the edges that you've drawn out these little spline curves and it tries to determine exactly what quads are going to be built so I'm going to finish it up with this last one and it's going to take these finished squares that are connecting and build a surface just by me hitting enter there you go we built the surface now the only reason it didn't quite finish this guy is because it ran into a weird silhouette issue so it's kind of like what do I do this corner is odd and to fix that is actually pretty simple so we can go in here there's an add split tool so the add split tool allows me to click on one area and go to the next edge click there and we can fix that it's really nice because it snaps too and it's using our radius information 
to figure out exactly where to snap to and how big. But again, the radius tool is mainly, let me hit escape for a second, the radius tool is mainly for our brush tool, which brings us to the next one. The brush tool allows us, like soft selection, to control a region. If I increase my radius, again, I can punch in the numbers, or just left mouse click, make it bigger, I can grab a larger selection of points. See that right there? Whole big selection there for soft selection. And then I just left mouse uh, drag in maybe my left direction and you'll see that I control a smaller region. Pretty cool. So that's really where the radius really shines. Next thing we can do is delete polygons. So maybe you decided you didn't like these two guys. You can just click on them and they're gone. Pretty awesome. We have uh, delete edges. So maybe this edge here sucks and we want to get rid of it. You can click on it and get rid of it. Or you can just hit control to get a whole series of them and just go through the line. Pretty nice. Um, there's a collapse, so if you need to collapse in a region, like, oh, we need to get rid of this, my art director just yelled at me. We need to make it a little bit more efficient for games and cut down, you know, some of the polys. Make sure you put triangles only in areas of deformation or areas that are not going to affect deformation. And that would be clothes or a small area where you know that um, it's going to make like a fold. And a lizard has lots of folds, so we could probably get away with that. And Control-Z, Control-Z again, get it back. And there's a split rings tool. This one's pretty cool. So we'll say we need this guy to be broken up a little bit more. We can. And you'll notice your silhouette gets a little bit better sometimes when you do that. So if I move my camera aside, you'll see that it doesn't quite get all of the model silhouettes here. But if I split it, you'll notice it changes. See that right there? And it makes up for that, having that lack of edges in there. It's pretty nice. And you can get kind of a cleaner model. Just be aware of your poly count. You'll see your try count down below in your menu. It'll tell you where you're at. Right now we're just like 122, and you just gotta watch that. It's really nice to have that for you. A little personal secretary stuff. And move vertices. So if you need to move vertices, you can move them, and uh, you can go in here and just hit shift if you need to. I'm gonna grab this guy, and let's move you over there. Get him over there. Now it does have the option if you wanted let me see, let's grab both these guys here. Oh, no, it does have the option where you can increase your radius, but for the most part, if you're going to move a group of vertices, I actually like to use the brush tool. And again, I'll just open this up and then just move them because it moves it past your silhouette or your region. You do have that limitation when you slide the edges, you can only go as far as you've built. But the brush tool allows you to slide a whole section of stuff, which I really like, and allows me to tweak out my geometry the way that I want. And again, using the radius tool is going to help that. So we go over here, we delete polygons. We can get rid of polygons if we don't want them. You guys saw me do that before. Um, you can collapse an edge. You can split a ring. We saw the ring here. We can split it all the way down. Um, pretty nice. Um, and if you need to split it on a smaller end, you can do like a split edge here. So this is a little more macro and split edge ring. This is all the way. It's a little more micro or um, a little more ma uh, micro for the small end and then macro for the larger set. So if you need to grab the whole area, you can split a whole bunch of rings right there. Um, move vertices tool, we saw that. You can move your vertices around pretty nicely. And then we have the slide edge tool. Now the slide edge tool works just like when it comes to splitting your edges. We can go in here and click one to slide the edge, or if you hit control, you can grab a whole section of them, which is pretty cool. So again, this allows you to do both. There are marked seams, and you'll notice when I move my cursor over my model, you'll see that it's being automatically unwrapped over here. Now, if you like it pelted, that'll be fine for you. I actually like to mess with shells a little bit, and we can break that up and bring the model back in to do so. Um, but marking seams allows you to actually break them up too, so you can actually do it here. Let me know if you guys have problems with it. I can maybe make a video for it. But for now, we're just going to mainly talk about hands-on how to mess with this guy. Finally, you can export if you want to, but what I'm going to do is um, you can also do it through here. But I like to save as I go. Just be careful. Not that 3D Code ever has any problems crashing. I've really had it crash on me once. It's pretty darn stable, but you should always save as you go. And finally, you can do the export retopo mesh, which gives you the option down here. Um, there's also subdivide, which I didn't get to talk about, but let's talk about that here. So if you want to subdivide all of your mesh, it'll do the whole thing, even though they are in separate shells, or separate areas, which is pretty killer, pretty nice. I mean, you control Z, and it'll subdivide it once, twice, does it mathematically. Um, there's clear, if you want to get rid of it, maybe completely messed up. You can relax it a little bit if you notice it's a little too tight, 
and there's also the symmetry tool which basically turns your symmetry on and off it does kind of the same thing as what you did before so it turns symmetry off and we got to fix something and let's see if it's going to work looks like it's still on so this guy I'm not going to worry about him so much let me hit alt zoom out and there you go so he's already on so it's really not going to do anything because we already set it but if your presets are with the way that you want you can turn that on automatically all right that's about it so hopefully you guys if you have any questions post it in the video down below and if you're in my class go and post it in the group and hopefully this helps you guys out i am done